As they approached the vicinity of Zhang Yi's hideout, Xing Tian took out his binoculars to observe. He ordered his soldiers, without my command, no one is allowed to launch an attack on Zhang Yi's hideout. Today, we are primarily here to watch the show. The four factions had gathered one by one. It was time for them to launch a coordinated attack, as planned. As the one who proposed this siege, Xiao Honglian held a meeting, calling the other leaders together. Xiao Honglian spoke, is everyone here? Then, as per our plan, we will attack the hideout from four directions, Xing Tian said, we plan to attack from behind the hideout. Wei Dinghai was skeptical. The hideout backs up against a low mountain range. Are you planning to climb over it? Although the mountain range wasn't very high, only about 100 meters, traversing it in a snowstorm wouldn't be easy, not to mention launching an attack from the mountaintop. Xing Tian addressed the three other leaders, that's exactly why we can surprise them. Leave the main front to you all, we will attack from behind. Inwardly, Xing Tian thought to himself, I'm just here to watch the show, circling behind will keep them from noticing us. The other factions naturally had no objections, even if they did, it wouldn't necessarily be effective. After all, each faction operated independently, and no one could command the others. Unbeknownst to Xiao Honglian and Wei Dinghai, Xing Tian had secretly made a deal with Zhang Yi. In their minds, this was a battle they couldn't lose. Wei Dinghai said, very well, leave the frontal assault to the three of us. Xiao Honglian added, when we arrived, we discovered they had a very skilled sniper. Be careful and focus on a single target. Additionally, among them is a mutant capable of deflecting artillery fire. So, be cautious when using large caliber weapons, or we might end up hurting ourselves. Wei Dinghai also said, yes, I also want to remind everyone about this. We suffered considerable losses in this matter as well. They think that the Baishue sect and the Qingbu base were both attacked by Zhang Yi. He mentioned this to avoid any personal impact during the chaos. Xingtian and Zhang Yixian had similar reactions. Got it, understood. They were there mainly to stir up trouble and show their power, not to actually fight. However, when they learned that Zhang Yi possessed rare spatial abilities and could deflect rockets, they were taken aback. This meant they couldn't use heavy weapons. Xiao Honglian emphasized, good, let's set a time. At 3.30, we will attack together from all sides. Yang Sheng and the Zhao Yu base both coincidentally chose to approach from the direction of Jia Town, moving towards Yunshua Manor. This area had few surrounding obstacles. To deal with Zhang Yi's sniper, they had thought carefully during their rest period. Moreover, on their way, they used snow fog or smoke bombs to disrupt Zhang Yi's vision. When Zhang Yi realized all this, he wasn't in a hurry. He had anticipated the opponent's schemes. They weren't fools who would recklessly charge into his line of sight. However, to attack, they would still have to leave their vehicles and face the risk of being shot. He knew there was no need to rush. Every excellent hunter knows how to be patient. At this moment, Yang Xinxin's voice rang in Zhang Yi's ear. Zhang Yi, enemies have appeared at the back of the mountain, Yang Xinxin's voice came through. Zhang Yi's eyes sharpened as Yang Xinxin transmitted images from the back of the mountain to him. When Zhang Yi saw the figures moving behind the mountain, he felt more at ease. So it's them. No need to worry, they must just be here to watch the show. Zhang Yi wasn't too concerned about the appearance of Xing Tian and his group behind the mountain. He shouted into the radio, enemies have appeared. Prepare for battle. Everyone in the hideout was now on high alert. This battle could be a matter of life and death. Yang Sheng and Zhao Yu, along with their battle vehicles, began advancing towards the hideout. All the soldiers were armed and dressed in combat gear, ready for the fight. Additionally, there were powerful mutants preparing to take action. The Baishua sect and their followers spread out in various directions to approach. They carried guns and traditional weapons like broadswords and long spears. When the distance between them and the defense line was only 300 meters, Zhang Yi suddenly shouted, Attack! In the control center, Ang Xinxin decisively pressed a button aimed at Yang Sheng and Zhao Yu. The snow walls began to crack and the ice was shattered by the powerful firepower from cannons and guns. Deafening explosions echoed across the battlefield. Even heavy tanks and armored vehicles couldn't withstand the strength of the cannons. Many vehicles were blown away, crashing into those behind them. The ear-splitting explosions shocked all the factions, causing them to scream in panic. Zhang Yixian felt dizzy. Cannons, tanks, and even machine guns. My god, how did they get such weapons? Xiao Honglian was also stunned, unable to believe her eyes. Such heavy ammunition could only be found at the Shishan base. 
Had they looted the entire arsenal of Shishan base? How could they have managed to do that? Transporting heavy ammunition is very difficult, making it hard to use in actual battlefields. But today, they became the first group to use such weapons in combat. There was no time to be astonished. Xiao Hongyan quickly commanded her troops to disperse and begin the counterattack. Immediately disperse and counterattack, she shouted. In the first wave of attacks, they were caught off guard, and many people were blown to pieces, with their combat vehicles also being destroyed. With a cold gaze, Xiao Honglian said, This defense is just an ice wall. Smash it and push through. As long as we can reach the hideout, we will win. Despite the surprise attack, she remained calm because Wu Huiren had told her that this hideout lacked a weapon system, being merely a solid structure on the outside. Therefore, breaking through the outer defense would give them a great chance of victory. The soldiers on the battle vehicles, fearing annihilation, hurriedly grabbed their weapons and jumped down from the vehicles. But as soon as they left the vehicles, they immediately became targets for Zhang Yi. Standing calmly on the tower, Zhang Yi began his surprise attack. The process of eliminating enemies was somewhat monotonous, aim, pull the trigger, reload, and repeat. Each time he repeated this action, another soldier fell. In these apocalyptic times, Zhang Yi had mastered sniping professionally. On average, he took down one soldier every three seconds. Behind the mountain, Xingtian, despite initially planning not to participate in the battle, couldn't help but be terrified at the sight. I always wondered how Zhang Yi dared to confront so many forces. It turns out he has a sniper hidden, he said in fear. Inwardly, Xingtian felt fortunate and pleased with himself for wisely choosing to cooperate with Zhang Yi. He instructed his subordinates, make some noise with your guns, but be careful not to hit anyone around. One soldier scratched his head and asked, Boss, there's no one around here. Xingtian slapped him. Don't talk so much. Just remember, absolutely no injuries to anyone. Pounding his chest, Xingtian proclaimed loudly, Xingtian is a straightforward and resolute man who always keeps his promises. Since we've taken from Zhang Yi, we must repay him fully. Unless Zhang Yi is defeated, we will never attack them. The gunfire erupted behind the mountain, making it seem as though they were urgently initiating an attack. On the other side, the battle was extremely fierce. The two major bases were caught off guard, resulting in heavy casualties and significant losses. In a short time, Xiao Honglian gritted her teeth, watching the soldiers being killed and feeling regretful. She yelled into the radio, this approach isn't feasible. We've underestimated Zhang Yi's defensive firepower. If we had known Zhang Yi possessed such strong firepower, we would have prepared more thoroughly. But who could have imagined that a makeshift army assembled from warehouse managers in the midst of the apocalypse would possess such professional military firepower? At that moment, Wei Dinghai's voice rang out beside her. We must join forces to break through this outer defense line. Xiao Honglian agreed with Wei Dinghai's thinking. Their firepower was mainly concentrated here, and they lacked manpower. If they could break through the defense line, they would be at a significant disadvantage. Wei Dinghai urgently said, support me with firepower, and I'll take care of this. Xiao Honglian gave the order for the soldiers to suppress the defense line with firepower, coordinating with the Xiaoyu base to attack the snow wall defense line. At the battlefield of the Xiaoyu base, Wei Dinghai was covered in a translucent snow armor, gradually blending into the snow on the ground. Outside the snow wall defense line, the artillery continued to fire. Wei Dinghai sprinted towards Zhang Yi's snow wall at incredible speed. He charged like a fish swimming in the snow, and in a blink of an eye, the tanks were overturned. The snow wall exploded into pieces. Zhang Yi and everyone else also witnessed this scene, feeling a sudden shock. Su Chunlei, however, remained silent, looking towards the shocked Uncle Vu without saying anything. Wei Dinghai continued his attack. His hand touched the wall and activated his power. A colossal snow wall, like wallpaper, was torn apart. With a resounding crash, the steel frame inside lost its support and collapsed loudly. This power even left Zhang Yi breathless with amazement. The strength of Wei Dinghai compared to Su Chunlei was many times stronger. Wei Dinghai chuckled. In this snowy world, I am the king. Machine guns and tanks may be effective against ordinary people, but they are completely useless against a powerful mutant of the snow element like me. 